Hello guys, welcome! Today I'm gonna paint this hummingbird in acrylic. Here are the materials I'll be using today. So to start off, my first goal is gonna be to cover this entire canvas with paint. I'm using the one inch bright to make crisscross patterns all over the canvas. I'm gonna use color mixes that roughly match what I see in my reference picture. I'm not too worried about detail and I'm making sure that I don't darken the canvas too much so I don't have any problems drawing my subject in later. Now I'm introducing some peach where my roses are gonna be. And I'm gonna slow the video down to normal speed at crucial points in the painting process, but most of this is gonna be in time-lapse. This painting took me five hours to complete. I'm sure no one wants to stick around to watch me paint for that long. And I have to say, this painting gave me a run for my money. All paintings go through a hot mess phase, but I feel like this one, for me, was a hot mess almost all the way to the end. You'll see what I mean later in the video. Because this painting was such a process for me, to say the least, I want to take this moment to talk about how to handle problems and work through frustration and blocks as an artist. I feel like all creative types struggle with this. We'll have a brilliant idea, we get super excited, we can't wait to start working on whatever it is we want to work on, and then as we start working, on our piece or our song, or it could be a book, whatever it is that you're creating, you start finding roadblocks, uh, problems that are inherent in creating something. And I feel like a lot of us get frustrated to the point that we just stop and we say, oh, I'm never gonna finish this painting or I'm never gonna finish this story. Let's burn everything and I'm just gonna go to bed. And I used to think like that for a really long time until I realized that every roadblock, every problem that I've ever had in anything that I've tried to create is just a lesson in disguise. There's something that I need to learn and going through this project is how I'm gonna learn it. Once I'm done with my background, I took a moment, let it dry, and then I sketched my subject using watercolor pencil and I wanted to block my hummingbird first because I have so many other elements that can compete with him. I wanna make sure that I know where he lives all through this process. And the first problem at this stage is, see that dark green area right next to my hummingbird? That's gonna become a big problem later in the process, and I don't think I realized it at this point. Now I'm starting to block in some of the leaves using the same green colors that I used to block in my bird. And here we go. This is the real big problem I'm gonna have in this painting. I'm starting to block in my roses, but I don't know if it's because it was late in the week or I had a really, really, really intense week at work, or I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't really paying that much attention to my reference picture, and the initial block in was way, way off. I don't realize until after I've blocked in every single rose that I'm going to have a really hard time bringing them to life. I'm using quinacridone magenta and my number 8 filbert to sketch the outline of every single rose. At this point I'm still painting away, blissfully unaware 
of all the problems I'm going to have to solve later. So what I did was I kept filling in the other parts of the leaves underneath the roses and starting to play around with different shades of peach. Eventually I come in with some purples for the roses as well and starting to refine my hummingbird a little bit more. And I remember stepping back over and over and thinking to myself, hmm, this isn't, this isn't working. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not working. It's not working. Uh, I think I don't have enough green, so that's why I'm painting more leaves. And then I look back and I'm like, well, maybe I don't have enough uh, pink on the roses. Uh, I knew something was off at this point, but I couldn't pinpoint it. Remember our friend, the dark green, right next to my hummingbird? I wasn't aware of it at the, at the moment, but it was throwing my entire perspective off. Just that little bit of green was throwing my entire composition off in my mind, and I didn't know what it was. I started fussing with the background, thinking that was the problem, and then looking back and said, no, still wrong. And then I started lighting areas around the hummingbird, and I still looked back at it and couldn't figure out for the life of me. I even tried spraying some water and creating some uh, blurred background effects to see if that would help it. I couldn't tell for the life of me what was wrong with this painting. All I know at this point is that this isn't working. But instead of calling it quits and maybe trying something else, maybe scrapping it and starting over or trying something different, I continue to work on it. I'm not giving up on this piece. So I went to bed and then I came back to it the next day, having looked at my reference picture several times before even attempting to paint again. And I noticed that my roses were off. Here I am starting to correct the position of my main rose. And this is the moment where I realize that that green blob next to my hummingbird is throwing my entire painting off balance. Now that I fixed that, I realize I have way too much green in my background. I also start adding white to lighten certain areas. Now I'm starting my second pass on my roses. And I'm using the same quinacridone magenta with a little bit of my Hansa yellow and combinations of unbleached titanium and titanium white to create all the shades in the roses. And I'm gonna spend a long time on this painting adjusting colors and fussing with the roses, adding light around my bird, trying to separate him from the roses. And also, around this time, I decide that I don't want all of my roses in focus, so I'm gonna start blurring some of them into the background. Another pass on the leaves, refining some of the shapes and adding some shading. At this point, I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, finally. Some of the problems I have at this stage are my roses look a little too cartoony, and I'm looking for them to match the style of my hummingbird. I'm not pushing for photorealism, but I do want them to look a little more realistic. I'm also doing another pass on the leaves, adding some more shading and a little more detail. Now I'm turning my attention to the hummingbird and starting to add some of the shadows. And now we're adding highlights. And this is the last session of painting. I'm gonna start adding some unbleached titanium with the magenta and the yellow 
to the roses to start lightening them up. I'm also going to continue pushing some of the roses out of focus, add more light to the background, and eventually I'll start adding some circles for a bokeh effect. I'm also adding some finishing details to the bird, different colors, pulling in some yellow uh, to make him seem like he's glowing. This piece was a very interesting learning experience for me. Uh, looking back, I would have done a lot of things differently. I'm definitely going to take these lessons to heart and try not to make the same mistakes on my next project. If you want to follow me on social media, all the links to my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are in the description box below. There's also going to be a link to Fine Art America where you can purchase prints of this and all my other previous work. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? I have new art tutorials every Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. I'm David Cavillan, and I'll see you guys next time.